Welcome to another week here at the Tarullerin. So a lot of you expressed interest on uh, seeing some of our plans and our blueprints and we wanted to share some of this with you all for a while and hopefully answer some of your questions. So we're looking forward to taking you through a little bit of a tour, highlighting some of our progress so far and uh, it'll be a good recap for those of you that are just joining us. The home was built at the later end of the Victorian time period. It sits elegantly on a hill, and we would characterize it as a Queen Anne based on unique architectural details. At the very beginning of the project, we went around and measured each of the rooms in the house and used the blueprints that we received from the previous owner to make our own set of plans. This area of the home is amazing. We want to finish it as much as we can to how it was originally. Fixing the pocket doors, correcting the coffered ceiling, and getting back to the original flooring. Most of you that have been watching for a bit know that we chose to remove the plaster. We did this for several reasons. While some rooms were not as bad, in many areas the plaster was already cracked and crumbling. It gives us the opportunity to add better insulation soundproofing and fireproofing between the rooms and it allows us to fully customize the electrical and the plumbing to our needs. It helps us to know that we have really taken care of all damage and problems that could otherwise be unseen and we hope to get a similar aesthetic by finishing it with purple board and plaster at the end. The next area where there is a significant change is in the dining room. While formal dining was a staple in Victorian living, we had to consider our lifestyle and how the space would best be able to serve our growing family. We wanted plenty of space for dining with our friends and family, but also wanted to connect that space with the heart of the home, which for many now has become the kitchen. With that in mind, we decided to take down the wall between the dining room and kitchen and we also intend to remove the doors to the hallway and replace it with a beam or an arch to fit the details in the rest of the home. We opted to create a walk-in pantry to help store small appliances and food, and the chimney on this end of the home was no longer functioning or needed, so we took it down to get additional space for the pantry. But don't worry, there are still five beautiful fireplaces that we intend to preserve and convert to gas or electric. Across from the kitchen and the dining room will be our living room. This room is staying almost just how it was with the exception of closing up a bathroom access. Here's the grand landing at the top of the staircase. We are taking care to preserve the original woodwork and we'll finish the space with the same arches like before. The home was initially built with gas lighting. We are really glad we opened up the ceilings because we found burns and fire damage in nearly all of the rooms upstairs. An inconvenient necessity. Out of curiosity, I browsed a little bit of laundry history and found that the first electric washing device was invented in 1908. A modern washing machine came around in the 1950s. So since our home was built in 1903, it is most likely that the laundry got sent out to a laundry service. As you may have noticed in older homes that have been updated, a common dilemma is, where does the laundry go? So this home had the same challenge. After months of going back and forth on different ideas, like maybe the basement, or a corner of this room, or this hallway, or second floor laundry, we finally decided that if we would do it any way we liked, we would want a second floor laundry. That is one advantage of taking on such a large project. These things can be customized. So we also found that we had a few other needs on the second floor that we could address at the same time. Storage and bathrooms. So a few weeks back, you saw us frame up one of the four bedrooms on the second floor to become a laundry, a shared four-piece bath, and walk-in closets for the two adjacent bedrooms. 
This is the room we have in mind for our kids' room. It has the best views in the whole house. We removed the ceiling in this room, and when we did, we found quite a bit of extra space. It's not final, but we are thinking of using this for a sweet loft that the kids can enjoy as they get older. We also decided to make a small change to the bathroom across the way, making it private to the adjoining bedroom. By taking out the unnecessary access from the stairwell, we gained a little bit more space to make a more adequate shower. This room is our master bedroom. It has views of the river and a private bath, and eventually we will use it as a guest space after updating the third floor attic into a master suite. So you all know that the exterior needs quite a bit of work still and that's something that we will be uh, handling as we make plans for next few months. Um, thank you all for helping us with our color choices. I think right now we're leaning towards the greens for the exterior. We just have to finalize uh, what shades and color placements. And I think we would definitely use at least some of the blue color schemes maybe inside in some of the rooms so we're really excited for that well we had an unexpected setback today when we got to the house and Emmanuel you can share well we had to call the police because some of our tools were stolen overnight as I got back here in the morning the more expensive power tools uh, the cordless ones were all gone they kindly left behind their iced tea so the police officer took a DNA test and We'll see um, if we get any results or not. But I guess it's up to the insurance and the police to figure out what the next steps are. I think it's mostly just a little frustrating because we lose some hours that we had planned to do other things. And um, it's always frustrating when you know someone's been in your home. Right. So. And then we have to go and buy new tools just so we can continue working, even if potentially in a month or so they find them. We still have to work on the house, so we need new tools. It'll set us back a little. Yeah. So we're just trying to kind of um, get back on track from that. And otherwise, we are just continue working on the house. I finished this week the floor replacement in Elias's room. I have an extra video for that. Um, you might have already seen it, depending on when I publish each video. Thank you so much for watching the walkthrough. We really enjoyed sharing a different view of the project for you all and hopefully it helps to answer some of your questions. If there's anything we didn't cover, uh, be sure and let us know and um, we're really glad you all have been following along. Thanks, bye! Thanks.